Hi, everybody, and welcome to Exegetically Speaking, a podcast of the friends and faculty of Wheaton College, Wheaton, Illinois, and the Lanier Theological Library in Houston, Texas. My name is David Capes, and I am the Senior Research Fellow at the Lanier Theological Library and a former dean up there in Wheaton at the School of Biblical and Theological Studies. Our purpose in these podcasts is really very simple. We want to promote the study of biblical languages, Greek, Hebrew, Aramaic, so we can read the Bible more faithfully, study it more fully, and not just read it, but to live it. Joining me today on Exegetically Speaking is Justin Smith. He's from Tennessee originally, but went to Wheaton College and now is doing a THM at Holy Cross Greek Orthodox School of Theology in Boston, Massachusetts. Justin, great to see you. Great to see you too, David. Thanks for being with us today. Glad to be here. So how did you get started reading Greek? I got started reading Greek at Wheaton College with Dr. Lonsma right. and Dr. Penny. Uh, yeah. Applause track right there. Good. So Dr. Penny and Lonsma. Yes, sir. So you yes, had a twofer sir. at that point. That's absolutely there. Some of the best Greek teachers I've ever had. I've had a few now. Good. Yeah. And now you're working on a, a THM? That's right. A THM on Basil of Caesarea. Okay. So you're reading in Greek pretty much every day, it sounds like. How do you keep it up? What do you do? Well, it starts in the mornings. I once heard a 90-year-old plus man talk about uh, his experience on the mission field in China. He met a Chinese man who, who said, no Greek, no breakfast. And so he, he, uh, he encouraged me to think likewise. So I, I, I do all my morning reading in Greek in the New Testament and in the Old Testament in Septuagint. So usually at least a couple chapters every morning. And then, of course, the studies take you there. Mm. And you've worked on modern Greek some as well. I have, I have. And my thought there was, if I was, you know, take it back to the, the Chinese example, if I was in China and I wanted to read Shakespeare with a dying passion and all I spoke was Mandarin, I could A, figure out what each word in Shakespearean English means in Mandarin and kind of work my way through the text slowly. And that, that could work. It would just take time. Right. Or B, I could go somewhere where there was a spoken dialect, a different dialect, but a spoken dialect of the same language, English, Australia, America, wherever, uh, and get conversational in that language and then come back to the different rules behind thee and thou and that kind of thing, the different, you know, mm-hmm. rare vocabulary, and then be able to actually read instead of just translate. Mm. So that was my thought. And so I've, I've gone to Greece and, and done a little bit of modern Greek since. Now, that means that you pronounce Greek like a modern Greek person would, not like a Greek teacher who's using a different pronunciation scheme, right? I do, David. And you know what? The funny thing is I listened to one of these one of your podcasts with uh, Dr. Kalansis, and there was a time when I was a student under Dr. Kalansis, and uh, I was maybe a little bit trying to imitate him at a senior seminar, and I read a, a passage of the Bible in Greek for dramatic effect. And the students laughed, but he was looking at me kind of straight-faced, and he said, who taught you how to pronounce Greek? (laughs) (laughs) I've learned from the best, Dr. Kalansis, for sure. Well, we're going to look today at Luke chapter 19. You've got an interesting kind of take on a passage that I actually haven't thought about before. And so you're you're going to teach me something today uh, as we look through it. So what are we looking at in this passage? Yeah, so we're looking in in Luke 19, 1 through 10. This is just something that I came across, and it's an interesting textual connection. So it's the familiar story of Zacchaeus. And as everyone knows, who knows the little song, you know, Zacchaeus was a wee little man. He was in what kind of tree? He was in a sycamore tree, right? (laughs) Looking at verse 4. In verse 4, yep. And so Zacchaeus runs ahead, and then he climbs up, anevi epi sycamorean. So that sounds pretty innocuous, right? And if you're an English speaker, you're reading the Bible, it's, oh, that's a sycamore tree. You can, you can piece that together. That's one you hope that appears on a vocab quiz or something. <laughs> yeah. But if you've, if you've steeped yourself a little bit in the Greek language, then something a little bit more interesting comes up. So you know that siko is a fig. It's a fig, and siki is a, a fig tree. And so sycamorean is like a, it's like a faux fig tree. Mm. In fact, morean in modern Greek is, is a mulberry tree. It's, it's fake berries, you know. It's mm-hmm. not something you should, you should eat. Don't eat that, no. That's Don't right. eat that, but right. it, might be looking, it might look enticing. Mm-hmm. And so the same thing with a sycamore tree. It's, it looks kind of like a fig tree, perhaps. 
but it's not. It's a little bit of a deceiving tree. Which is interesting because Zacchaeus has been a deceiver, right? Himself. He's been a deceiver, that's yeah. right. But he's he's interested in Jesus, you know. He climbs mm-hmm. up in this tree, which, you know, perhaps perhaps stands for him in a way. And he's, he's, he's in the tree, and he sees Jesus, and Jesus rather sees him as, as Jesus is crossing by. It says Jesus looks up and he sees him. He sees Zacchaeus. And he says, come down with haste. And so Zacchaeus comes down. And, uh, and of course, you know the story that Jesus wants to dine with Zacchaeus today. Mm-hmm. And this is a stumbling block to other people. They grumble about it, how Zacchaeus is a sinner. But Zacchaeus says to the Lord in this encounter, he says, Behold, the half of my possessions, O Lord, I give to the poor, que itinos ti esikofadisa, and if I have defrauded anyone, is how it's often translated, mm-hmm. I will give them fourfold. Okay, so that's interesting. Then, if you're reading in if you're reading in English, you totally miss that. There's no apparent connection between sycamore and defrauding someone. Yeah. But if you're reading in Greek, and you've got a little bit behind you here, then you've 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 already noted that Luke has has gone out of his way to tell you that. Zacchaeus is in a sycamore tree, not just any tree. He didn't use dendron, mm. he used sycamore. And that's so that's that's something you take note of if you're a careful reader. And then you you run into this verb that's not very common. It's only used twice in all the New Testament. And here it is, esikofadisa. And it means, you know, defraud, but it's got that that same kind of siko is like the fig there, it's similar to the fig. It's the same the sweetness you know. almost. Right. And and fadis would be or fado is like an appearance or you know, I appear. So maybe I appear sweet. There's this deceptiveness to it. You know, mm-hmm. if I defrauded anyone, and if you think about it, any kind of defrauding entails a little bit of deceit, you know. Absolutely. It's, you know, I, I appear one way to you, but I, with my other hand, I'm doing something else. Right, right. It's enticing, you know. It, defrauding is, you know, you're enticed to do something. Something seems pleasant or or good about it, and yet, right. boy, the hands in the pocket already, right? Taking right. Away something away from you. That's right, David. And and so it seems that Zacchaeus is in the sycamore tree, which in some way embodies him. It, it represents him. It's he's 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 defrauded, and he's in this defrauding tree as it were mm. and christ comes he desires this something still in him though that desires to see the lord and the lord comes and the lord looks up and sees him in this tree and he, he won't be seen from afar though jesus calls him down and has a face-to-face encounter with him mm. and in a way already as, as zacchaeus will come to profess a little bit later he's already left his defrauding his past defrauding life and he goes to confess that to the lord Look, if I've defrauded anyone, I'll restore to them fourfold. And this is a connection that seems to jump off the page in the Greek and something you wouldn't notice if you were just reading in English. Yeah. If all you're doing is reading in English, you're not going to see that. You're not going to hear that. You're not going to see that connection. The deceitful one and the deceitful tree now coming down and claiming his deceit and giving that up and promising to restore fourfold everyone that he has defrauded. That's a great lesson, Justin. Thanks for being with us today. I'm glad to be here, David. Thanks to Ian Rosine, Rebecca Larson, and Silvio Vasquez, who helped us produce this podcast. Thanks as well to John Lanzma, our Wheaton-based director, who makes this podcast possible. We're grateful to Phil Keggy for our music. If you want to study biblical languages, then you need to consider Wheaton College. Whether you're an undergraduate or a graduate student, we have amazing programs, a first-rate faculty, and some of the best students in the world. So go to the website, www.wheaton.edu, and look for Modern and Classical Languages. Get started today. If you have questions about this or any of our podcasts, we'd love to hear from you. If you have suggestions or questions about any passage in the Hebrew Bible or Greek New Testament, send us an email and we'll see if we can get one of our experts to weigh in on that for you. Our email is exegetically.speaking at wheaton.edu. That's exegetically.speaking at wheaton.edu. Thanks for listening.